Hello there, my lovely Legionnaires. This is yet another month-long challenge coming to you the month after I've done it. This time it was Huevember. Every single day I drew a character themed off of a particular color on this wheel. I decided that after drawing other people's characters, then my characters, that I wanted to try and make an excuse to draw a shit ton of fan art. So I only drew characters that I liked from things I've watched or read. So today, I'm bringing you 30 pieces of fan art, and possibly a few recommendations to go along with them. Let's get into it! So day one was Warwick Archangelo from Gangsta. I fucking adore this manga with all of my heart. It's easily my top five favorite manga that I've ever read, period, and I picked it up on a whim one day from a bookstore because the title looked funny. It's been on hiatus since 2019, and I'm slowly dying because, of course, Sensei had to leave us on the worst twist known to man. And I know that Kosuke-sensei is ill, and I want her health more to recover than I want new chapters, and... But I really want new chapters, guys! I really need more chapters! Warwick is my favorite character, and listen, he, he was going through it the last time, during the last chapter, and I don't know what to do with myself until we get some more information, I'm dying. But he's my favorite character partly because of his enormous tits and thick forearms, and we're not gonna lie about that for a single minute. But I've also said repeatedly that I like cunning, conniving men who scheme for the greater good, and he does that a lot while having big tits and enormous forearms, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. I can't recommend the manga enough, especially if you like queer, disabled, and POC rep in your manga. Please, please, please just read Gangsta. Day two was Sanji from One Piece, and I had to draw my man for a yellow day. I didn't have any choice. What was I supposed to do? My precious love cook, my prince. I could easily make a whole video about how tired I am about his mischaracterization, and I might. The slightest provocation will push me. You don't know. Don't don't tell me how to live my life. I just fucking might. One more bad take on Twitter and you're gonna have a two hour video essay. Anyway, I was torn on the outfit I wanted to draw, but I like the prince outfit from Whole Cake, so I picked that one. And the Whole Cake destroyed me emotionally and made me fall in love with him so much more, so memorializing the best arc of One Piece currently. I really solidified how much I adore him, and here's hoping for more OPLA so I can see Taz Skyler in this outfit, because if I do, I think I'll actually die. Day 3 was Genjo Sanzo from Sayuki. Welcome to the continuing trend of maybe 10 of you knowing who these people are. Uh, I've said before on stream that my tastes oscillate wildly from obscure and popular. I just like to like things. I've said repeatedly that the things I enjoy are very vibes-based, and Sayuki's vibes are immaculate. I think Sayuki is one of my favorite versions of Journey to the West. I have a deep affection for Chuckle Fucks having adventures, and of course Sanzo was going to be my favorite because I love tired dads wrangling their stupid fucking children into the back of the car. It's so good. I also really like the contrast between a demure, empathetic Buddhist being a chain-smoking, exhausted asshole. It's very good. It's so fucking funny. I don't know. A lot of the comedy in Sayuki really resonated with me. I just, I really like the subversion of the tropes. I love dumb assholes having adventures, like I said at the top of this. Watch Sayuki and Reload and Gunlock and Reload Blast and Zero In. Just, just watch all of Sayuki. For day four, I picked Ahsoka. My Star Wars journey is going well. I even know who Quinlan Voss and Stellan Geos are now, so I know everything. I am not constantly lost when Brooke and Justin say names at me. I was also the only person in the house who ended Ahsoka a little... lukewarm? I don't really have any interest in talking about the series at length here, because I do want to make a video talking about how I felt about Ahsoka, because I don't like a lot of people's critiques of them while I have critique of my own, but... I'm gonna boil a lot of it down to, I don't really like her characterization in it. In Clone Wars, she was fun, she was sassy, warm, but they kind of made her just another stoic Jedi for most of her series, and she kind of got lost amongst Sabine's plot. I don't mind that archetype, but it just doesn't feel Ahsoka. She warmed up a little bit at the end, but by the three quarter mark of the series, and I was having more fun watching Sabine, who hadn't changed at all, and I don't know. I love her to death, I and mean, it's not like I hated the show, it's just I didn't like it as much. I miss when she was fun. Day 5 was Denji, and hey, hey, can my precious baby son have one relationship that isn't emotionally or sexually manipulative? That'd be really cool. 
Denji's a really deeply sad character when you back up from everything, and I really just want to give the poor boy a hug. This whole story's overall grindhouse vibe becomes truly miserable when you apply it to a literal child. He's a goblin and a fucking moron who doesn't give a singular shit. There's not a thought behind those eyes, and it's why his dumbass keeps getting suckered in by shitty women, and I want our boy to have a happy ending, but he is continually stupid, he refuses to learn, I'm losing it, I'm getting really sad, I hope for the better. Day 6 was Regan Arataka. Had to draw the runner-up for Tumblr Sexy Man competition so fierce that it killed the Queen of England. I've been avoiding the last season of Mob Psycho because I don't want it to be over. Yeah, I don't know. I, I did the same thing with the last couple of chapters of the Yu Yu Hakusho manga. I just don't want it to be over. I don't want it to be done. Shut up. I loved Regan's arc in season 2. This whole section made me cry. One has a spectacular grasp on portraying characters with this type of emotional nuance that absolutely hooks me. Like, it's part of why I really like One Punch Man, but I had to stop watching One Punch Man because the animation became... bad. I've said before on other streams that I love Men Who Scheme, especially when they're silly morons, actually, and I want him and Serizawa to hold hands awkwardly. They're both baby girl. I can't handle it. I want them to take care of their precious... Uh, secondarily adopted psychic children. Day 7 was, of course, going to be Kenshin Himura, my man, the namesake of my entire brand. So I'm adoring the new remake, absolutely loving every single second of it. I need them to make good on their promises and do the whole series, because if we get to season 2 and we don't get season 3 again, and this is the 8th version of the Kyoto arc that I have to get through with no Jinchu arc at the end, that will be my 13th reason. I will throw myself into the sea. The new Sakuga and the art style give me more dopamine than anything else in the universe. I don't know how to explain to you that I was absolutely buzzing during that first episode. The English voice actor is really good too. Richard Hayworth is going to be my Kenshin forever, but Howard Wang is doing a great job. And finding out that he was donating to a children's charity because of the traitor's bullshit brought me absolute joy. Our king's true kindness. A good Kenshin through and through. I feel like this is the most correct I've ever drawn him. The way that he's perfectly gender makes my love of him deeper, but it also makes him really fucking hard to draw. Day 8 was Karama! I'm gonna be so real with you, my legionnaires. I have no expectations for the live-action Yu Yu Hakusho. I'm sitting here, crossing my fingers, and hoping to god the rumors about a remake of the anime are true, because the Kurama in the live action looks worse than 75% of the cosplayers I've seen, and I'm kind of losing it. Yusuke and Kuwabara look cool though. Kurama's the template for all the beautiful men that can and will slaughter me for fun that I end up enjoying. He's elegant and pretty, and an actual fucking monster that has killed for sport and will do it again for possibly even less. I can't wait for a whole new generation of fangirls to ship him with Hiei and totally murder his characterization as the crew's only brain cell. <sighs> Love that shit. Day 9 was Kohei Nagase. I can actually promise you that there is one person watching this video who knows who this motherfucker is, and it's the person editing the video and sitting right next to me. Because I threw the manga at her face the moment I moved in. Gimmick is easily one of my top three favorite manga of all time, and the manga isn't available, like, anywhere online. You have to buy physical volumes of it, and that kind of sucks because it means that it's really hard to get your hands on, but... This, again, manga that I picked up in a thrift store because I really wanted to figure out what the fuck this was about, completely changed my perspective on artistic responsibility, self-harm, how you deal with survivor's guilt. It's so good. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. It's just... If I can use my influence to promote anything, it's this manga. Trust. Trust me, please. Day 10 was Dante. I chose old Dante, mainly because it's my favorite design. I want the coat. I need it in my life. I've talked about cosplaying a femme Dante at some point. Would also defo be this one. I liked Devil May Cry 5 overall. I thought about drawing V for one of these, but decided I wanted to repeat franchises as little as possible, and I was already repeating One Piece, like, a lot to fill in some gaps. I think this is the best Dante that I've been able to draw. I have a really difficult time managing to get him to feel as effortlessly cool as he is in the actual games, especially considering how cool he is in general. But I think I really captured it here. I also like the fact that 
as he's gotten older, his brand of cool has changed a little bit. It's become a little sleeker, a little more streamlined, and a little more subdued even, but he's still a goofy dipshit. And that makes me really happy. I'm glad to see that Dante's getting to change, even though he's not the protagonist of his own series and hasn't been for a while. Hi, Virgil. Day 11 was Shirahoshi. I was hurting for pink characters, and I really, 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 really wanted to draw her. I know that objectively, Vivi's the best written princess, and I really wouldn't fight anybody who would say otherwise, but Hoshi and Rebecca are just precious and I love them with all of my heart and I've got to be real Shira oh, she's probably my favorite I want to scoop her up and cuddle her precious little angel baby look at her she's so cute every time she cries my heart melts I can't wait for her to come back and be the coolest in the world she's so good I love her so much she's Luffy's so mean to her I can't believe she's one of the ancient weapons of the world out here controlling the most powerful beasts in the sea. Hope that she gets that motherfucker that tried to kidnap her at the fucking reverie eaten. He deserves it and die. I can't wait for her to show up again and just become the fucking coolest. She's gonna show up to the War of the Worst just riding on a Neptunian and it's gonna be the fucking sickest in the universe. I'm so glad. Day 12 is Marin Kitagawa. I feel like I didn't quite get her down, but I think I got her energy and I think that's kind of all that matters. I know there's a lot of feelings about the show and I don't begrudge anyone for being a little put off, but I fucking love it, and I am going to make an entire video about why I think that it's stupid that the community sexualizes her the way they do, but we don't have time for that. She's so sweet, her relationship with Gojo is the most wholesome ever. I really want to talk about the series as a whole, but I gotta, once again, fight off the urge to do that here. Anyway, I want to protect her with my whole heart, and I would really like it if you losers would stop looting her for your weird VTuber add-ons when she is the sweetest, most wholesome baby in this planet. Please, I am so fucking upset. For day 13, I had to draw our boy Kinji Hikari. For those of you who aren't caught up with the JJK manga, you might want to skip this one because I'm about to tell you some shit. Finding the palette of him is a mess because he hasn't had a cohesive spread yet and because he isn't in the anime, he doesn't have any like official splash art. Uh, but I know his hair is purple, so bam. Purple. Purple. Anyway, I love our bisexual king. This motherfucker's out here banging trans girls, absolutely fucking rocking shit. We side with the house because the house always wins, motherfucker. I can't wait for his shit to be animated and for him to become the second coming of King Crimson, where everyone says his powers are wildly complicated when it's real simple. My man's is a pachinko machine. It's... He follows pachinko machine rules. I don't know what to tell you. There's something so hardcore about his stupid motherfucker going out here having so much raw power that his body just says no. It's so good. He fucking rules. Can't wait for him to jump the King of Frauds with Lawman and Best Boy. Fucking, we always bet on Hikari. Something, something, copy pasta. So for day 14, I drew Leon Pokemon. He will always be my champion. You fake ass fans were so mean to him. I love watching the Pokemon fandom talk all the shit in the world about whatever game is current, and then as soon as the next game comes out, all of you get real quiet, I'm listening to you motherfuckers now that Scarlet and Violet came out talking about how, oh no, Sword and Shield wasn't that bad actually, fuck you, you are not loyal, I hate you, your crops will wither, and your children will not survive the winter, fuck off. I never switched up. Leon's always been my favorite champion, probably one of my favorite Pokemon characters, period. He's so sweet, he's so well-meaning, he's such a genuine character arc, too. I feel like for all of the irritation at its graphics, everyone missed how I think this game had some of the best human character writing in the entire series, and I'm glad that Scarlet and Violet followed that trend and let the characters shine alongside the Pokemon. It made me so happy. I just love fucking Sword and Shield are so good, guys. Day 15 was Molly Mock. I wanted to draw him for a purple day, and if we're being honest, I feel like his artwork came out the worst out of everyone's. I just feel like I screwed it up. I might just redraw it entirely. It just looks really flat. I don't know what to tell you. I think I could start it all over. I don't know. I might. Uh, uh. I love Molly's design and I had to remove the patterns for this nightmare of a day. I think this part really was what makes it look bad on top of just looking, again, flat. I feel like the posing's off, the legs are too thick, his feet are too big. And, uh, I just fucked up his proportions. I don't know. Anyway, I ended up falling off of Critical Role, mainly because it's just kind of too long. My one biggest critique is that when every session is four hours long, if you fall like two weeks behind, you're kind of fucked. I fell off because of some stuff in my life at the time, and before I knew it, my neurodivergent ass had no way of getting caught up. I'm looking forward to the cartoon, especially since I'll get to see my boy again. 
Day 16 was Dorian Pavas. Those of you who are out there being huge fans of the Pale Elf, let me introduce you to the fucking blueprint. I adore this man so much. Truly a big part of why I didn't romance him in my first few playthroughs of Dragon Age Inquisition was because I was too fond of the friendship he had with my Inquisitor, and I loved his dynamic with Bull. I hope that in the new game, since it's supposed to be set in Tevinter, that we'll get to see more of him. I hope he's out there making the Magisterium a living hell for racist fucks, brought home his massive Canari husband just to make them viscerally uncomfortable. Dorian's also the only necromancer that gets rights, considering that his arc is fascinating and I want more of him, but we can't trust Bioware, can we? Day 17 was Crom! Let's play a fun game of is he handsome or is he voiced by Matthew Mercer? The answer is both. Give me my soft-hearted himbos, goddammit. This motherfucker keeps breaking training dummies because he doesn't know his own strength. He eats oranges like apples. I love him so much. Normally I don't like the Prince on the White Horse archetype. I think it's really boring. There has to be something to it. Not necessarily that they're fake. In fact, I hate that even more. But the idea that they're a purely perfect man is lame. Crom bypasses that by being fucking stupid, and I love that for him. Awakening was my first ever Fire Emblem, and I had a fucking blast with it. Now I'm just dedicated to my special boy ever since. I want a few figures. Just one statue, please. Tharja has so much merch. Let me have one cool statue of him on my shelf. I hate it here. Day 18 was John Ward. Faith fucking rules, dude. I love a good exorcism plot, and I super love the most horrible body horror you can ever imagine, mixed with these deep psychological trauma. You can tell that this was made by someone who was close to the faith itself, not necessarily in its accuracy, but in its vibes. The themes of being robbed of humanity by the faith, being pushed to destruction as you lose that faith, it's all really cool. John's one of the most interesting horror protagonists I've seen in a long time, and he's, what, 10 blue pixels? Erdorf's writing's incredibly strong. I'm stoked to see things like Excuse Me Sir become something amazing once it's finished. Having played the demo, I'm just gonna be here for whatever Erdorf puts out for the rest of forever. Day 19 ended up being Yatora Yaguchi. I changed this character like three times, but I ended up picking Yatora because I am deep in the blue period paint. Pun intended, I guess. I really need Yabaguchi sensei to get out of my backyard because I don't know how this fucker knows so much about me. I'm getting so tired of these reads, man. I've read new volumes of this series and absolutely broken down sobbing because I get it. I've been there. Watching Yatora fall out of love with art because of his circumstances around him, because school pushes him too hard, because he just doesn't know what his relationship with art is in true context. This is what it feels like, especially in the fine arts. I've been so stressed about projects that I've made myself sick before. My precious boy, I get it. For day 20, I picked Princess Vivi! I wanted to draw the last outfit we saw her in since it was very her. And like I said during day 11, Vivi's absolutely the best princess objectively. I can't wait for her to rejoin the Straw Hats and kiss her tangerine girlfriend. I can't wait for her to become the crew strategist or ambassador or politician or whatever the subtitle for her is going to be. But she's going to join the crew again soon, I hope, and it's going to rule. We rewatched all of Alabaster recently, and I fell in love with her all over again. There's something so powerful about her pure-hearted love of her people and her country. Her and her father being the dream we all have for leaders of the free world. Someone who adores her people, wants them to succeed and flourish, wants to see her nation rise. Watching her go from a naive, sheltered princess to a competent, confident individual was heartwarming. It's one of Oda Sensei's strongest suits in his writing, and I cannot get enough. I also decided I wanted to give her melanin because she lives in the desert, and you can't stop me! Day 21 was deadweight, I mean Nero. I wanted to try and draw his metal arm, and I haven't drawn him in a long time. I think, I think I've actually drawn him only once. I have actually drawn him only once, oh no. Uh, anyway, I found myself really endeared to him after finishing DMC5. I never got a chance to play 4, but he was a riot in 5. While Dante's defo my favorite, and I don't think that's ever gonna change, I'm perfectly content with the next phase of the franchise being about him, provided we get more. I really want him and Kyrie to get more screen time. I like the idea of these two raising a gaggle of stupid children. Nero does have great big brother vibes, and I just want to get to see that actually on screen for once. I want to see him rocket riding his fist to the awe of all these small children. I like the pose too. It's the first time I really made the long coat look good sitting. I feel like I really captured his cocky energy. Day 22 was Miku! I knew I couldn't avoid drawing her, so uh, here we go. You're not really an artist on the internet if you don't draw Miku at some point anyway, so yeah, it is what it is. I don't think I've drawn her so much. 
She's an iconic design. You can put her in every setting known to man, and it still reads as Miku. If any of you were curious, my favorite Miku songs are Nothing Special, Propaganda, Bacterial Contamination, and Rolling Girl. Not necessarily in that order. Most of my favorite Vocaloid songs aren't Miku, because I listen to a lot of Steam Pianist, who mostly uses Gumi and Oliver. And my favorite Vocaloid song is Contarella, a Kaito song, even though Miku's in it. Drawing her skirt was a pain in the ass, but it's really good to get the practice in. I think I'd like to draw Miku some more. Maybe I'll do a series of Miku Mondays. Day 23 was Tanjiro. I saw the seafoam color and had to draw my baby boy. The community's really turned on Demon Slayer, and I don't get why! The manga's really good! I finished it a year ago, and I thought it was a really great story of empathy and human endurance. But then again, the shonen community doesn't give a single shit about the actual narrative of the shows they consume, only the fights. Anyway, I love to see the current trend of shonen protagonists being higher empathy. It's nice to see kindness be taught to the youth. I love a good dickhead protag like Yusuke, don't get me wrong, but I love precious baby angels like Tanjiro and Itadori. I really want to put him in the baby box with his friends. They deserve it. Day 24 was Twilight. Spy Family is really an interesting read when you look at it from a more than face value. Having picked up a couple of the things Endo Sensei put out before just to see what his original discog- I don't know what you would call this. What his original library was like. He- you could tell he has a really strong hand with political thriller, but also with comedy and relationship drama. It's tough to balance these things without feeling like it's totally inconsistent. And Twilight himself is a great highlight of it. I love the slow melt of his facade as opposed to having moments of prominent cracks. The moments where he second guesses his initial thoughts about being kind and sweet is so fucking honey sugar sweet I want to die. I love that he's too serious to understand normal people. I love that he's so put together that the slightest cracks show on his face despite being a super spy. He's just the perfect example of Endo Sensei's weird skill for blending tone. I love him so much. Day 25 was Kotetsu T. Kaburagi. I'm so fucking excited for more Tiger and Bunny. Unironically, I think a big reason why I was so let down by My Hero's later acts is because Tiger and Bunny did them better. The whole series is fundamentally better put together and capitalizes on its themes more efficiently. Kotetsu is, again, a great example of that. I fell in love with him immediately because I love this idea of old ideas holding hands with the new rather than them being completely abandoned. Having a hero who believed in more old school traditional heroism being partnered with cynical new guy was a great way to show the change of the times. The relationship is great both platonically and romantically when it comes to Kotetsu and Barnaby. Kotetsu's everything Midoriya could have been, goddammit. I love a goofy dad who's in it for the love of protecting people, slowly turning into a more rounded person over the course of the series who understands the changing times and wants to keep some of their old shape. It's so good. It's so good. Please watch Tiger and Bunny. For day 26, I picked Zoro. Most people who don't know me too well assume that I'm a Zoro girly, which is a fair assessment. I do like himbos and samurai, and you would only be half right in assuming that he was my first pick. Because for a long time, he was! I only really jumped on the Sanji train after Alabasta. I still love him, though. Zoro's a great caricature of samurai ideals played up to their extremes, I think. His passionate, blind loyalty to the rest of the crew is amazing. He's just a big dog. A precious, stupid Rottweiler that'll protect his family without thought or care. It's so sweet. Oh, hey, Oda-sensei, by the way, um, what's up with him constantly dying? We've seen him technically die twice, and that last time in Wano, he actually saw the Reaper, and then we never got any conclusion to that. Um, hey, what the fuck is up? Day 27, I picked the best romance in the Fates games. You do not get an opinion, Kaze. Nobody talks about him, and that's a fucking crime. Kaze being so oblivious to the fact that he's handsome is the most endearing thing in the world. I loved him looking at you and being confused that the women in the villages just keep giving him stuff and then getting all shy. His support ranks with your kids once you're married. Oh my god, him and Kata having that competition to see who can make you the happiest. Oh my god, it's so good. I do not know what to tell you. It's so sweet. I'm a sucker for bodyguard princess romance, too. It's so fucking cute. Being close to you, making him develop a fondness for you, and then his genuine care and kindness towards you turning into romance. Immaculate. I want to scream and cry. Why can I never get Merge of the Fire Emblem characters? I like, I hate it here. Day 28 was Kazuhiro Miller. I'm already planning on making a whole video talking about Cause and Venom as a romantic pair, so I'm not gonna retread that here either. Spoilers! Don't worry about it! 
Today, I'm gonna talk about the man done dirtiest in all of Metal Gear. Kaz's whole fucking life is just ridiculously heartbreaking. The poor man really is out here suffering to suffer, and it, of course, grabbed me by the throat. I was capital D done for when I read about how he was losing a fight against Big Boss. He pulled the pin on a fucking grenade so that he could take them both out. It's peak samurai shit, and I just- fuck, I adore him, he's so good. Also, can we talk for a minute about the fact that throughout the entirety of Phantom Pain, he was just right? He knew there was a traitor, and he was right. Fuck you, Huey, you traitorous rat. Day 29 was Space Mom, Hera Syndulla. So, I only saw Rebels this year, right before Ahsoka, because Dave Filoni told us that you didn't need to watch Rebels to watch Ahsoka, and he just lied. He is a liar, and you are a fool. But... Anyway, Hera! I love her so much. I love the contrast of most of the female Twi'leks we see being sexualized in some way. And then there's the fucking Syndulas, being the best. Fun little through line, by the way. Hera's father is voiced by Robert Adkin Downs. The guy who plays Kaz. It's a fun fact. Just thought you should know. Hera is, in fact, the greatest pilot in the galaxy, and I adore her. Hera was here through every moment and is doing the right thing from moment zero. I hope she has a more prominent role in the movie that Dave's making, because I liked her in Ahsoka, but I always want to see more. I want to watch her throw hands with Thrawn for trying to appropriate her culture. I think that'd be funny. And on day 30, our final day, I had to draw a Grogu. I wanted to draw something a little on the easier side to wrap up, and I wanted to make an attempt at drawing him in my style. I have a lot of thoughts about Mando, and specifically Grogu's relationship with his father, but I don't really know if I want to talk about that. I'm really excited to see what kind of person Grogu becomes. Seeing a child grow up and change is always a good overall story frame, and we're already seeing that in what feels like a meaningful way. He's a sponge, absorbing and learning what's right and wrong from his father, and I really want to see him struggle with his force propensities with someone who has no connection to it. I just want to see more stories in general about Jedi who don't have some ties to the Order, who have to learn totally on their own. It feels more interesting to see how everyone finds their own relationship with the light or the dark. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. And that's it! Another full month's worth of art. I didn't talk about the art itself much this time, but it's mostly because my responses would be close to the same each time. I'm happy with most of the work, I could really use practice with sitting poses, I wanted to focus on value more than color inherently, and I think I got a good amount of practice. You'll probably catch me throughout next year tweaking and redrawing some of these things for my own studies to refine the skill some more, but for now, I want to return to the challenge mind. I'm doing Dean December, after all, and if you want to see that artwork as I finish it, keep up with me day to day, join my community, or watch me live, all those links are down in the description. Thank you once again to my dearest editor, our dear bubbling Brooke, whose information is also down in the description if you'd like to get some videos edited. And I'll see you next time for the biggest art project I've ever done to cap out the year. Goodbye!